All right, so this is actually my favorite set of circumstances because the person can feel like they're dying, look like they're dying, have so many symptoms, it's just crazy and hard to get traction um, when it comes to treatment. Yet it's very, well, we'll show you. All right, so we've got a guy with a bunch of symptoms going all around the country. And this is what he looks like from behind. You can see there's no jugular vein on the right. He has one jugular vein on the left. He's basically born with one jugular vein. You see all this venous system back in here trying to adapt. So, and actually I'll show you inside the head. Uh, he does know when he wears a hard hat, uh, which he has to do for his work, that it gives him all kinds of symptoms. He can't have any any pressure in here at all. He can't have anything, anything putting pressure back here at all. Uh, okay. So we look inside the cranial vault, and there we can see the transverse sinus on one side is normal, on the other side uh, is not. It's so hypoplastic that uh, even if they try to do manometry in there, they may well, one day somebody might try to do manometry in there where they put a wire through there to see if they can check for a pressure gradient. But sometimes they won't even try getting through there because it's so hypoplastic, not enough. Interestingly enough, we've had cases like this to where they did get the wire through and the person's, actually we had a guy 13 years, couldn't sleep through the night because his headache was so bad, vertigo, uh, and you know going to emergency room and uh, doctors for 13 years, no, no effect. And then we ended up uh, talking a neurointerventional radiologist to do a manometry test. And just by putting the wire through there, looks similar to this, just by putting the wire through there, it opened it up enough and all of his symptoms went away. His headaches went away for the first time in 13 years. He could sleep through the night. And when I told the, ther the uh, neurointerventional radiologist about it, he says, wow, therapeutic manometry. Who would have thought? But that is the difference we're talking about, just the slightest little difference in the venous system uh, makes a difference between symptoms and no symptoms. All right, so here we are back to your, let's just say you're born this way. You have one functional jugular vein. The other one really is not even in play. And then what happens? You play football, you do, you live your life, all, and then the, all kinds of injuries or whatever, and the styloid starts to grow. The styloid ligament starts to calcify, and eventually you get a calcification that comes down. Uh, you do know that when you bring your head down, which will dig the styloid into the jugular, into the atlas, you do know that you just get to where you can't even work and you just have to, you know, leave society um, and look at that. So that's what happens to his one functioning jugular vein. Uh, this is the other half of your, of one junction, functioning jugular vein, if you could even say it. And that's one of the reasons that this is a, a slips through the cracks. It's so hard to quantify and qualify what is an actual functioning, normally functioning venous system, is it adequate? Uh, a lot of doctors will say, hey, you can just uh, cut off one, style, one jugular vein, tie it off, and it doesn't matter, the body can adapt. Well, not everybody can adapt, and how do you know if they're, they're adapting or not? That's the big question, and it's too, too difficult to, to come up with. Um, all right, so we had somebody else just like this. Uh, same exact scenario. Now, what happened with him, uh, well, actually, we'll start with that. So this is what, what like what we did with you. Here, this is your atlas. This, these are the, uh, let me move this right there. I'm gonna move that right there. There we go. This, these are the atlas orthogonal x-rays. We show that your atlas is up to the right, to the tune of 2.79 degrees. The atlas is 6.9 millimeters higher on the right. We adjust it. Here's the post x-ray. It comes down beautifully. We're very proud of ourselves. The plane line comes down. The, the ACD goes to 1.5. Nice, beautiful correction. Uh, when we do that with a lot of people, we're heroes. Uh, we do that with you, just like we did with the other guy I was just talking about, and uh, they're really not significantly better. Some symptoms are improved, some th symptoms are worse. So actually, this is a beautiful case. We adjusted uh, that crooked atlas from the right to bring it more towards plane line, which ends up putting more pressure on this jugular vein here. Uh, now today we adjusted you from the front to try to open up that vein and I think we threaded the needle nicely. Oh, but back to the other guy. So we, we've seen this before. 
So what did, what did our other guy do? Well, uh, he had this exact same thing and what, it was causing an AV fistula. So you, you put this much pressure back up in there, boom, you're gonna, he, in this case, he blew out the connection between the artery and the vein and now he had high pressure artery inflating low pressure vein causing symptoms. Got the AV fistula fixed, helped him a little bit. Got his atlas adjusted, eh, maybe a little bit. Then we put a, a stent, we got our, our same guy that did this, we got him, he got to uh, put a stent in there to open up this vein. That helped him too, but still miserable. Then he did a blind blood patch. A blind blood patch? Well, that's because a lot of these CSF leaks that people have when they're in this kind of a situation are so difficult to find, uh, you end up just getting a blind blood patch. In his case, they did the low back, and that was the first time he felt like a normal human being. So you're gonna be kind of just like that, only in this case, we're gonna end up getting the styloid removed over here. We're gonna send you to an, to an ENT who's gonna agree with me. Um, and that's gonna relieve a, lot, relieve a lot. You might end up getting a blood patch before it's all said and done for you to feel better. And our guy that just had the blood patch uh, not too long ago, he's gonna get two and three until he gets a point of diminished return, until uh, he feels, because he feels better with each one. He's done two blood, two blood patches so far. And uh, that's, the, that's this mechanism, uh, just, for clarity, the CSF drains into the venous system by a pressure gradient. That is, you have to have low pressure in the venous system for the CSF to, to clear and, and all those byproducts of metabolism to go through that kidney-like system. Uh, and so you, you back up the venous system, you start having all kinds of problems. Uh, actually, the brain can even descend a little bit. Uh, there's all kinds of things. All right. What did somebody else want to talk about? What are questions? What am I missing that he, somebody wants to talk about? Uh, I think you nailed the, the CSF leak possibility with my symptoms with the pressure behind the head, mm -hmm. um, behind the eyes, and progressing throughout the day, getting worse. Drinking caffeine, coffee in the morning, it does diminish the symptoms, the severity of the symptoms. Having caffeine in the afternoon, does the same. Um, I agree with everything you are doing. Um, I just, where do I go from here? You know, and that's why I believe your report's so beneficial. Right, right. So, uh, right. So th there's a scripture that says, talks about a king that even though, even when the disease became life threatening, he would not go to the Lord. He would not pray and talk to God about it. He only went to doctors, therefore he died. So we have to pray and ask for God to guide us on what is the next thing to do. What seems rational to me would be the styloid next. Obviously, I'm an atlas orthogonist, so we're adjusting your atlas and trying to fine tune, you know, having the, the, the atlas down for the CSF and the, and the vertebral artery. We'd even talk about how you, you have one jugular vein and you have one vertebral artery. So getting the atlas adjusted, uh, the vertebral artery, and this is the venous phase, so it's not even showing the artery, but it loves this adjustment. Um, basically, getting your atlas adjusted, getting your styloid removed, those are the next steps, and you you might end up having a blood patch before you, you finally feel better. But you'll just walk through it and prayerfully consider all your decisions and which doctors to go to. God will guide you through this thing. He didn't leave you here. All right.